Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Cat Veritari. Yes, we are back in Forza Horizon 4, who the guess that? And this, uh, this episode, we are going to check out uh, this week's uh, cars you can buy in the store, the Forza Ton store. Uh, it's winter season when I'm recording this, I'm recording every episode a week after... The season event is changing, so forgive me about that. But we oh we already have this one, the Renault Turbo Force Edition. So I don't need to buy that. But we can buy this Unicorn Gimcana 10 Ford Focus RS or X. So let us do that. And this is something else I need. Uh, not really. Do you need to read a jack jacket? No, not really. Okay then, so let's check out the uh, Gimkana and uh, Renault and take them out on the test track. Well, the Gimkana can for the focus, I think. I'm not sure. They look uh, pretty similar for me. But I reckon it's a cool car anyway. So I think we already had a Ford Focus around. No, it was the other one. Maybe let me check it out. Well, the uh, Ford Fiesta was around. This is the Ford Focus, I think. So that uh, the Ford Fiesta did a 118.033 uh, in the summer. So, it should be interesting to see what this will do. So, any further ado, let's take us on the test track. Alright then, the Ford Focus. Uh, the Gimkana 10 car. Let us see what it, will, what it will do. First, we have to line up the car. Come on, don't be too stubborn now. I think that is the best we can do. Okay, so in 3, 2, 1, go! Turn around when it is safe to do I'm not going to turn around, Anna. I'm using Anna for a breaking point up through the corners up here because the GPS will help. So, just so you know. Okay, a little bit of time. It's actually quite fast. Turn around when it is safe to do yeah, so. it's actually quite fast. This is going to be quicker than a Fiesta, I swear about it. I think so. I'm not sure now. In 400 yards, turn right. Ah, you're going to be quite a quick. Okay, that was car there. Just fly. Maybe the same. Don't have the top speed, you know. You have arrived at your destination. And cross the line. Okay then. So that was a Ford Focus then. Okay car, quick car. Ugh. I don't know what to say. You have so many game counter for Ford Focuses now in this game, but like are they really this um, different? I don't think so. Okay, now we have the Renault are uh, going to take out and test it. I'll be right back. The Renault Turbo. I don't know much about this car. I reckon it's a, some type of race car, so it should be interesting to see. Maybe it's a touring car. Back in the day. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, it will be interesting to see what it will do. So, any further ado, let's take it out on a test track. The Renault. Turbo... 5 Turbo something. I don't know the history about this car, but I think it will be interesting to know about it. it is safe to do so. 
It's four wheel drive, that's for sure. Which I reckon this is going to be a good like um, corners car. Okay, line it up properly. Okay, so in three, two, one, go. It's not that fast, like an escort of the line. I'm not sure if I have been to tires on this car. Ah, should I restart? Ah, okay, why not? I want to give this car a fair chance. Uh, I mean, sorry, a uh, cut. All right, we are back again. I didn't want to see all the start there. Start there, but this is a handful. I just want to go tail sliding all over the place. It's a, it's weird. It's like, it's a pivotal point. It's like, you want to tip over always. It feels weird. You see, and there it goes. Oh, I had to break. I lo lost it already. Good man, not good. Maybe this is even faster than the escort. You have arrived at your destination. And there we go, across the line. A little bit of a corner cut there, but uh, why not? Okay then, that was the Renault then. It was faster than the... I think it's faster than the... The, the Focus. I already forgot what the name was, the car. Uh, what do I think of this week's cars? If you need to get one of them, get this one, I think, because you get the uh, many Jim Carnes car before. And uh, if not, maybe save your money this week. I don't think they are not too excited. It's a cool car, but you don't really need it, I think, if it's, if it's something special. But else save your money okay then uh, what can we do now then uh, I was talking about, about leaving this for doing this on my own time we don't have too much to do like I'm going to trap, uh, step down a little bit of uh, I have three episodes of uh, Forza, Forza in the week I'm going to step it down for to two so every Tuesday and Thursday is going to be a Forza episode up. But uh, what should we do now? Yeah, we can do a British racing green. Why not? You know, I really like this car. Not Me that too. I want to drive it for too long. Squeeze yourself in there and let's see just how fast you can make it go. Which won't be too fast. But hey, I could be surprised. You never know about me. I can make it go really, really, the really fast. The P 50 has the dubious honor of being the smallest production car in the world. A one-door microcar coupe. Featuring a 42cc air-cooled engine. Capable of a heinous 38 miles an hour. And a handle, so you can pick it up and carry it with you when you get to work. And keep in mind that this is the production version. The prototype had the single wheel at the front. No, <laughs> I was hearing what she was saying about the car, and I was Why hitting the cone. Why do you think that was a good idea? What the actual? In 2010, though, production restarted at Sutton in Ashfield. So, if you'd like to own the modern incarnation of this, I suppose you can. What? Can you buy this now? Okay, that is cool. Well, why not do another one since that was so short? Nothing to say about the PLP 50, but uh, you know what I mean. Hey there! Hello! How about a car with some actual legroom. 
and some actual speed. This oh. section's about what happened when McLaren decided to make a road car. You're going to enjoy this. I reckon I will. This is the F knife. F one. The track and the road have very different requirements. For McLaren, that was a challenge they were more than willing to embrace. In 1988, they set out to create the finest sports car the world has ever seen. By 1993, they had achieved their goal, and the honestly fantastic F1 was the result. 106 would be built across all variants, and it remains one of the very best road cars ever made. The F1 has no turbocharger. That would have compromised the driving experience, increased complexity, and resulted in turbo lag. The F1 is a naturally aspirated supercar, one of the fastest in the world, in fact. Everything about this car is innovative, from the carbon fiber monocoque to the central driver position. McLaren threw the book away when they designed the F1, then they wrote a better one. The F1's monocoque chassis is incredibly lightweight, only 100 kilos all told which posed a significant challenge because carbon fiber and fiberglass aren't great insulators so oh. mclaren lined the entire engine compartment with gold, with gold. in I 1998 the f1 prototype set the world record for fastest production car a record that would stand for two decades until the koenigsegg ccr claimed the crown Wow. McLaren's racing heritage is so deeply ingrained in this machine that they took it to Le Mans in 1995 and faced off against purpose-built racing machines and won. Cool. F1 is an interesting car. But I was scared of the next car. Yes, the P1. So, with something like the F1 to live up to, where do you go next? Well, you throw the book away again and write an even better one. The result is the McLaren P1, a hybrid electric sports car that stands head and shoulders above the F1. It's not that I'm scared of the P1, but uh, the P1 GTR will hit 60 it's the miles an time. hour in 2.4 seconds. That's 0.7 seconds faster than the F1. That's an eternity for a supercar. The car's blistering performance is delivered by a twin turbo V8, supplemented by a McLaren Okay, can I cheat here going right? Motor, an instant power assist system. And they do mean instant. Yeah, I know this car is a handful on the winter. Remember the problems with turbo lag? McLaren solved that with a hybrid drive. Oh, what happened there then? While the turbos build pressure, the electric motor drives the wheels. No turbo lag, just torque. Okay, that was and weird. It's a hybrid, it has okay, 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 okay. Speed. I'm going to do that again. Running on batteries alone, that's 6.2. No. A bit more Dear. if you're going downhill. I'm going to do it again. You're not to force me to anything else. Okay, gun it. Remember those problems with turbo lag? McLaren solved that with the hybrid drive. While no, the turbos build that pressure, was worse. The electric motor drives the wheels. No turbo lag, just torque. Uh, and because it's a hybrid, it has an okay, going to do it range. again. Running on batteries alone with turbo lag, McLaren solved that with the hybrid drive. While the turbo okay, was that was a pressure, lot, lot better. Hundred and twelve or something. No turbo lag. Just oh, thank God! I knew I could do it better. And because it's a hybrid, it has an all-electric range. Running on batteries alone, that's six point two miles. A bit more if you're going downhill. I reckon that is economical. Do you? No, not not. Okay, okay. All right then. Should we do one more? 
Yeah, we should do one more because I don't have anything else to do in the episode. You have seen me race up plenty of time in this series, so. I quite walk like so? sleeper cars. Did Alex ever tell you the story of what we got up to in Colorado? There was this sleeper car competition, you see. Let's just say no one was ready for the sunbeam. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Lotus never quite let go of the upgrade game. So in addition to building their own supercars, they upgraded cars from other marks too. Oh. The Lotus Carlton was one such aftermarket upgrade. Lotus took a respectable four-door Vauxhall saloon and turned it into a supercar. From the outside, there are a few signs that this is something special. Why the wheel arches, that's the thing. But under the bonnet, that's where the magic starts. This is the... Engine capacity was no. increased to 3.6 litres, and twin Garrett T25 turbochargers were added. The engine block was reinforced, and new crankshafts were forged by Opel and machined in Germany. At the roundabout, take the third exit. No, we are the taking the first wider, exit. And the tire compound from the Lotus Esprit was used. To handle camber change issues, they put in the self-leveling suspension from the Opel Senator. No. The only upgrade they didn't put in was an electronic speed limiter. All of this resulted in the Lotus Carlton, designated Type 104 by Lotus. A 177 miles per hour supercar, masquerading as a four-door saloon. Only 950 cool. of these custom gems were built, and they've become something of a modern classic. Interesting. The Lotus Carlton was an example of how to turn a saloon into a supercar. But that's not the only thing Lotus got up to. In 1979, Chrysler approached Lotus to create a strict rally version of their Sunbeam three-door hatchback. Lotus, as you might imagine, rather enjoyed the challenge. Okay, Sunbeam. They took the rear-wheel drive hatchback and changed everything that matters. They stiffened the suspension, improved the anti-roll bars, and widened the transmission tunnel. Okay, I cannot cheat, and I was thinking maybe I was just going cross uh, or off-road. Performance was increased by fitting a 2.2-litre version of the Lotus 911 slant four-cylinder engine, resulting in an impressive 250 brake horsepower, up from a meager 105 on the original. Don't spin around. But this car is strange. It feels weird for the short wheelbase and four wheel drive. Ooh, it's actually quite fast too. The Lotus Sunbeam was revealed to the public in 1979 in Geneva to widespread praise in the Lotus media. Okay, I think I need to get a move on. I'm actually quite slow. I'm one minute and getting on two More miles done. The Lotus uh, oh. Saw racing success too. In 1980, Henri Toivonen won the 29th Lombard RAC Rally in his Sunbeam. Okay, maybe a good time left. Yeah, more than enough good time. There we go. It makes wonder if Lotus should do more conversion. It's a silly question, actually. Lotus should do more conversions. In fact, I'll call them right now. Yeah, you should call them right now. Right away. Now, now, Meg. Right away.
Okay then, let us. Uh, I also want to check out like, okay, solo, select chapters. Uh, so the only one I'm missing like uh, on the star. So all other are almost completed, and I have two left. No, oh, okay, cool. Okay, I think that's going to do it for this episode. We did, um, well, test out the cars and we did the, the Force of Tone, no, we test out the Force Tone cars and we did some British racing. I enjoying them and think I'm going to finishing them the next uh, time you see them around. So, any further, I want to thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like this episode, hit that like button, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Good bye.